Hey, we're back. KC and the Moonshine Band, Luke, the Rebel Without a Clue, and Melman, the Confabulate and my Mental Mind Meander. We were talking about mothers. We were. What about mothers? Oh, man. You, you can't do without them. Yeah, well, you ain't going to be born without them, but uh, we all had one at one time, but there's no shortage of stories probably to be told about mothers. Um, uh, I don't know if you guys are like me. I kind of suspect you are, or at least KC. It might be a Southern thing, but... I think uh, most people raised on this side of the Mason Dixon line remember getting a spit bath at one time or another. You ever get a spit <laughs> bath, Mel? Uh, is, is that like a sponge bath? Yeah, except it's with, with spit. Because, you, because you're sitting in the car oh. and your mama looks around and you're fixing to go in the grocery store. Oh, Look yeah. at you. You got chocolate on your mouth. And she'll get a <laughs> handkerchief and, and she'll spit into it or, or a napkin or she'll just spit on you and just start rubbing it off That's like that. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Okay. A yep. spit bath. I had a lot of those. You get one, Casey? Oh, yeah. I'll give a few, too. I still give them to my grandson. If we're going somewhere and I look around, he's got something more. Hey, he don't like that. My wife gives me one every now and then. Uh, too much information? Okay, <laughs> moving on from here. <laughs> that's, more, that's, well, I, that's called Frenching. Never mind. I, I... Uh, click. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyhow, yeah, well, mothers were good for that. That's just one more part of the, the loving care they give you. But if they're going to give you a spit bath... Uh, nothing quite says I love you like that. Another term of endearment, you know, like, you know, you, you blither idiot. <laughs> but yeah. the, that, usually that came when I was picking on my younger brother. <laughs> oh. my, mine call me son most of the time. Son? Once in a while she called me by my name, but mainly she called me son. And then, I, I like that. I, like, I wish I could hear that one more time. But. You know, my mom always wanted, she was, she strived to be a, an author and she did write a book. Wow. And, uh, but she always wanted me to write. And if, when I lived far away, she didn't want me to give her a phone call. She always wanted me to write a letter. There you go. She wanted to, and then I'd write a letter. So, uh, and you know, so I think I knew she, she liked that. So I'd embellish it a little bit and say, well, I'm looking outside, you know, and the, and the flowers wow. are, and she'd write back and she says, you know, I really liked the way you said that or, you know, and, and she'd critique, critique my letter. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so she took it really serious about, you know, being a good writer. I think another good thing about letters and back in the day was because it was something tangible. You could hold on to something that they touch. You right. could see their handwriting. Uh, if, they, if it was a girlfriend, they put lipstick on it or whatever. But you know, or doodles or whatever. But it's just something you can have and you can read and reread. Because when, when the phone call comes, it comes and goes, and you got to remember everything. But nowadays, I mean, but in writing a letter, you had something you could reread and, and redigest. And the, the great thing about it is, when, like when somebody like that writes you something and they pass on, you've got quite the memento of. Uh, of them. Just before she passed on, I came across in her dresser drawer the letters that her br brother, her brother died in World War II. He was buried in Italy. That oh. the brother, that the the letters that uh, her brother wrote to her, her father back and forth. And they had a plan. When he got back from the war, they were going to start a business. They they carried on a conversation. It was a very touching to read wow. those letters. Did she save yours? She did. Wow. Especially the ones I wrote to her uh, when I was in Guam, when I, during the Vietnam War, when I was overseas. Wow. She she she, she saved them all. Wow. And I mentioned uh, later on in her life, just before she died, she kind of went into dementia, and you never really knew if she was there or not. And I said something to her just, you know, to me yeah, as a tease. I said, Mom, I was, um, read where Grandpa Clayton said to Uncle Junior, and she said to me, she says, you was in my drawer. And I think, yep, yeah, that's where uh -huh. I was. Uh -huh. In you. Yeah. You got any letter writing stories about your mom, Casey? Nope. I don't think I've ever, you know, I was never really away that much. So. Me either. Fern. What? <laughs> Fern to me. Fern. Fern, yeah. I didn't live away from home. I mean, I, I moved out in my tw early 20s and got my place or whatever. So I never lived far enough away to write letters. But uh, in my, being the pack rat I am, I, I do have a, a couple of cards I made for her. You know, you, you take, you cut up a piece of uh, construction paper, which is whatever color it is, and, and I'd made a flower out of some other construction paper and put it on there and made a Mother's Day card. And I've still got that, and, and I was probably second grade or something. That means a lot to me. But I found another one a while back, which I think is my very first cartoon I ever drew, because I, I, I like drawing cartoons, I always have. And 
The cartoon was, uh, it was, it was like an attempt at poetry as well. On the front it says, this is for mother, is what it says, and you open it up. On the inside, it showed a, a very crudely drawn bed from the side view, which is like a, a long extended H, actually, which is a, supposed to be the bed, and like a, a lump there. Uh, kind of like it looked like a little mound, and it was like a hole, it looked like a rat hole. It was colored dark with two eyeballs sticking it, uh, seen for underneath, supposed to be under the covers. And, 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 the, and the rest of the greeting was on the inside of the card. So if you opened it up and saw this person peeking out under the covers, under the bed, and, and the, the full greeting was, this is for mother, and you opened it up and it says, who I hope will not smother. And I think I wrote that because that's about the only word I could think of that rhyme with mother for a Mother's Day card. This is for mother who I hope will not smother. <laughs> now she probably kept it because it was so stupid. Yeah. And she pulls it out and they say, hey, this yeah. is something. <laughs> no. That's right. And, I'm, and I've still got it. But. Hey, KC, here's something that my mother used to used to do to me, used to drive me crazy. Some friend of the family, old friend of the family that I can hardly didn't know or, you know, maybe met when I was a baby or something. She would call on the phone and she said, oh, Mel, come on over here. I want you to. Or I'll, I'll, she would want me to talk to this person that's on the phone, and I had no idea oh, my because God. the person met me when I was a baby or something. You know, and it would be so embarrassing. Uh, uh, hello, sure. uh, how are you? Uh, oh, you don't remember me, but I. <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, it used to drive me crazy. <laughs> what did your mom used to do to drive you crazy? Yeah, I, th I, I, I can remember other. <laughs> no, I can't remember anything. I, I, I everybody thinks your mom was the greatest, but. I think mine might have been. I really, I don't think I could ask for a better mama. I mean, really, she was. I would agree with that. I, I knew your mother. She was she quite was the woman. The sweetest. I never heard her say a bad word about anybody. I never heard her complain. I never heard her cuss. No. You know, she was salt a salt of the earth. A very sweet lady. Very sweet lady. How long has she been only, gone now, only, Casey? I guess complaint would be she, she was almost too soft spoken. Maybe she should have spoke up more. Yeah, you, well, you had to listen really, close. She was just, her voice was not real strong either. But, as that's I what recall. I meant. She, you, you had to listen close. And I kind of got that from her too a little bit because I don't I don't normally speak real loud. Well, you're right. You're right about that. You inherited well, you inherited something good. How long has your mother been gone? Gosh, I can't even remember now. This is uh, 35 Eight. years for me. Same year as the Skyway. My wow. mother missed a month of being 91 when she what? died. She died in 20, uh, 2011. You're a fortunate man. Had your mom those years. My, yeah. I was 25 when my mother passed away. She oh, had, my. She had emphysema. She was 48 years old. And she had a lot of other problems, too. But anyway, so I lost her at a young age. But I guess that makes the, uh, it robs me of a lot of memories we could have had, but it makes the ones you do have more precious. Hey, we could segue into an if bomb. What if something about your mother? All right, what do you want to what if about? What if you could redo it? What would you do different? Or if you had your mom back, what, was there anything you left undone or would have done or should have done? What do you think? Well, with me, I moved to Florida half a lifetime ago. And so I spent half a lifetime away from my mother. And, you know, we wrote back and forth. And I really, in a way, regretted it. Because at you know at the end you know when you know towards the end when you realize you didn't have much time le left with her I'm thinking I should have visited more I only I did it once every other year or something like that and I know it always hurt you know she was always kind of heartbroken when we visit and we'd have to leave you know right and thinking about and it always bothered me when I did leave because I knew she did it gracefully you know we 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 parted gracefully and everything you know but I always knew that she was hurt that well. I, am, uh, I hope you come back and see me again next year or something like that. Wow. How about you, Casey? What would I go back? Do I, do, I, I guess it seems sort of uh, trivial or not much to think about, but I wish I would learned more <laughs> recipes. You know, she, she cooked a lot. <laughs> wow. we, didn't eat, we didn't eat a lot of snacks, and we didn't eat a lot of, I mean, she sat down and cooked meals three times a day, you know, right. and cooked bread and cooked cornbread and biscuits. And, and I remember watching her sitting there, watch her prepare, prepare meals so many times. She never used recipes. She just started cooking, especially like with breads and all. She just started putting flour in a bowl and put a little bit of bread, milk in there, and mixing it up, and wow. first thing you know, we had biscuits. But That's a sign of a real cook right there, a real cook. Yeah. And a lot of them didn't even use the measurements. A lot, a lot, I don't think I have any written record of any recipe she used, other than, than pound cake, and that, she passed that on to my wife, but 
other than that, we don't have any. It was mm. very simple kind of foods, I mean, but it was very good. And she canned a lot, froze a lot of food, sewed a lot. All more prepared with life. Wow. My, uh, yeah, my, my sister has a few of my mom's recipes. I think the ones I enjoyed, what she did the most that she cooked, the ones I enjoyed the most was her, she made uh, spaghetti and, and, and chili and all, but she would make goulash, which you don't hear people eating very much. She, but she made a really good goulash. And she made uh, shrimp perlo, which I really enjoyed. Those are her favorite. My sister has some of those recipes. I should probably get those from her. You know, I can't say that I never did brag about my mother's cooking. I mean, she cooked good, I think, but but uh, uh, my mom cooked poor. <laughs> and, well, well, so and, did mine. And there was always, I never I never did like beans when I was a kid because I think, because we ate beans all the time. And if you go to my mom's house, if you've visited there was always a pot of beans sitting on the stove. Well, I like any kind of beans. She said, fine. "Well, I do now. I mean, I, you know, my my things changed with me. I, I I love beans now, but but back then it was just like, oh uh, yeah." She said, "There's a pot of beans in there. Go and get you something to eat." I'm thinking, "Oh my goodness! I think I'll go down to. <laughs> I want to go someplace. <laughs> I've had Give me peanut beans. butter and jelly." Yeah, but uh, she just the thing that my mom always did. She was always mixing things to preserve things sure. she would buy powdered milk and uh you know when you're running down on the regular milk she'd throw some powder milk in there and and try to fool you with it that's she right said, mom mom i know that's powdered milk i don't like that oh well <laughs> get you a cow yeah. well mothers well, know what they're doing they do what they got to to survive and to provide for their that's their it children. it was survival it was her survival techniques and that's why she could say you'll always you never went hungry that's you know, right. My dad know. said when I was a teenager, said, son, you're living in the best years of your lives. You better remember that. And I'm like, no, I can't wait to leave home and get my own place and get up and get my job, make my own money, be my own boss. And what I wouldn't give to go back home and park my feet underneath our table one yeah. more time and have a home cooked meal. Yeah, she uh, took one. We only had one vacation that I can remember. We took a vacation down to West Virginia to see her dad. Mm -hmm. And it was the only vacation I ever took with my mother. Well, back in the day, that was what we did for vacation. You went and you visited relatives. Yeah. You didn't go to no resort or no right. attractions. You visited relatives, and they came and seen you for their vacation, so you swapped off. Yeah. I think about what, what, what I would do different. I would have liked to, she, later on in her life, when she finally retired at age of 70, she took a, a cruise to Alaska. She did an Alaska wow. cruise. It was a writer's cruise. And she saved up for that. Wow. And very good. Thinking back, I wish I wish I could have gone with her. I wish I would have gone. I didn't even think of it back then, but I wish I would have gone with her. And she would have loved to have done that, had me go with her. But I wish I'd taken a lot more photographs of my mother and, and yeah. others too. Yeah. But I think my biggest regret is I would have been a I would have been a better son. By that I mean I was the oldest, so I was a brat and I was spoiled, rotten, and I fought with my sisters a lot. And I wasn't much help around the house. And I shouldn't have done that. I should have been, been a good son. But can't fix it now, but yeah. I can be sorry for it. That's what I can do. <laughs> well, how about you, Casey? What else you got? That's about it. I mean, I don't know that most of my memories are centered around the good things. And I can't remember about any bad things. Other, I don't think my mother ever spanked me or anything like that. Father did, but I don't think mom ever laid a hand on me. It's more of a wait till your dad gets home kind of thing, you know? Because that makes it more effective because you got all afternoon to be terrified. Yeah, I know. You get to think of that. I think one of the things I remember m about my mother, well, I know I remember it. It was it kind of sentimental when I started dating and I would go out on a date and uh, she would never go to bed till I was home at night. She'd give me a curfew of about of a, around, uh, you know, midnight or 11 or whatever, and I better be home. But she was, she never went to bed before I got home. And a lot of times when I'd come in, I'd walk in the back door and she'd be, I could see into their bedroom. My dad would be asleep and she'd be sitting on the side of her bed reading her Bible, waiting for me to come in. So that's just something that's always stuck with me. And I've kept that Bible after she passed away. Okay, man, we're about going out of here. We're down to 30 seconds, I think. So my mom uh -huh. did the same thing. She, she waited until I got home. How about you, Casey? Your mama wait up on you? No, she didn't. Not what? that I know of. <laughs> she was hiding. She didn't she didn't let you know that she was waiting for you probably. I'm sure she prayed for me a lot. But Absolutely. I don't know she well, thank God for mothers. Hope everybody enjoys their Mother's Day weekend. If you got your mama, Amen. you better tell her you love her. And we're out of here for this week. We'll see you next time.